You know, in any business, it's really important to. I shave them. Thanks. Like I was saying, it's. Jim, that's a nice shave. Well, we have just what you need to do that. Tonight in Neotropolis, this is not business as usual. Welcome to Neotropolis. We are not business as usual. Hi, I'm your host, Jim Evans. As we sometimes like to do, we give you a little hint about our feature business right off the top. And the company that we focus on tonight is right at the top of its industry. That's been the case for quite some time now. Now, you know who they are, and there's a pretty good chance you or someone you know use their products, which are made here in Northeast Ohio. So stay with us for that. Right now, though, we take a look at regional business news from the Neotropolis Good Business News Aggregator. This is the good business news along the I-77 corridor for the week of April 25th. Tuesday's Cleveland Plain Dealer front page reports that Euclid-based Lincoln Electric Holdings, a global manufacturer of welding and cutting products, is erecting what will be the largest wind turbine in Ohio and one of the largest in North America. In related news, Wednesday's Cleveland Plain Dealer business section reports that Lincoln Electric reported an increase of 27.2% in 2011 first quarter sales compared to the same time period in 2010. Tuesday's Cleveland Plain Dealer and Akron Beacon Journal business sections report that to meet customer demand, the Akron Canton Airport will be adding daily nonstop flights to Boston and Milwaukee and additional weekly flights to Philadelphia. Tuesday's Akron Beacon Journal business section reports that according to its annual report, Akron-based Summa Health Systems' seven owned or affiliated hospitals generated $927.1 million in 2010. Wednesday's Cleveland Plain Dealer business section reports that Cleveland-based Alpha Port Incorporated, a provider of engineering services and applied technologies for the aerospace industry, has signed an agreement with a company out of California to help develop in-space propulsion technology. Wednesday's Cleveland Plain Dealer and Akron Beacon Journal business sections report that Akron-based First Merit Bank has reported 12 straight years of profits and has plans to purchase more banks. Wednesday's Cleveland Plain Dealer and Akron Beacon Journal business sections report that Canton-based The Timken Company's 2010 earnings were $275 million, a dramatic increase from a $134 million loss in 2009. Wednesday's Akron Beacon Journal front page reports that according to a study commissioned by the University Park Alliance, a nonprofit community development corporation, the major anchor institutions located in or near University Park in Akron have a direct total economic impact of $2.5 billion within the area and an indirect impact of $3.5 billion within Ohio. Thursday's Cleveland Plain Dealer Metro section reports that the University of Akron will open a satellite facility in Lakewood this fall. Thursday's Cleveland Plain Dealer business section reports that the Cleveland-based Parker Hannafin Corporation, an industrial supplier of motion and control systems, reported record third quarter earnings. Thursday's Akron Beacon Journal business section reports that Akron-based startup Polyflow LLC and Partners will receive $1.6 million from Ohio's Third Frontier Economic Development Program to work on technology that converts polymer, plastic, and rubber waste into a reusable material. This is the good business news along the I-77 quarter for this week. Neotropolis is your source for good business news. Okay, how about a little trivia? The average man spends nearly 3,000 hours in his lifetime doing what? Apologizing to women? No, we put in countless more man hours than that. Got you thinking on this one, right? Just ahead, you'll see a company in our region that has big involvement in this activity. Another hint, members of the band ZZ Top do not participate. Right now, we want you to think about what's going on with our content partner, The Business Journal. It's time for the Weekly Buzz. I'm Stacia Ertis with The Business Journal Weekly Buzz for Youngstown and the Mahoning Valley. A big improvement in unemployment in the Youngstown metro area as it falls below 10 percent. 
Preliminary numbers put the jobless rate in March for the Youngstown Warren Boardman region at 9.9 percent, down from 10.8 percent in February and down from 13.4 percent a year ago. UCFC, the holding company for home savings and loan, returns to profitability. United Community Financial Corp. reports a net income for the first quarter of $2.96 million, or 10 cents a share. UCFC President and CEO Patrick Bivak says they're pleased and will continue to focus on improving asset quality. The first thing we've done, in, in, in my opinion, the most important is we've added some quality people uh, to our organization. UCFC has posted losses over the last three years. Governor John Kasich calls VNM Star and Delphi two terrific companies for the future. The governor made an unpublicized visit to the Valley this week. We caught up with him leaving Delphi's testing complex in Champion, where he checked out an electric charging station in Chevy Volt. I've spent a lot of time talking about uh, about Lordstown, you know, and it's important. But Delphi and VNM Star, two terrific companies for the future, and with. Um, and with VNM Star Steel, I mean, you start thinking about all the opportunity related to energy, maybe even some ways globally. So, good visit. I'm glad I'm here. Earlier, Kasich toured the site where VNM is constructing a $650 million seamless pipe mill. After nearly four years of planning, Bard Energy's Ohio River Clean Fuels project comes to a halt. Plank Trading, the Florida company that stepped in to finance land acquisition for the project, has said it will cease funding until it can come to a resolution with Bard on how to move forward with the project. Tracy Drake, CEO of the Columbiana County Port Authority, says there's another $4 million worth of property that still needs to be purchased near Wellsville. They believe that will probably then send a message to Mr. Bardson that he needs to step up to settle with them and move the project forward or it's at a standstill. Uh, we're a little bit frustrated, obviously, being in the middle. Youngstown will have to shell out about a million dollars this year due on the construction of the Cavelli Center. City Council has learned $300,000 in principal payment is due by September. The payment will be partially offset by a $240,000 settlement reached with the developers of another project. And those are this week's headlines. Be sure to check out the Buzz Newscast every business day online at businessjournaldaily.com. I'm Stacia Ertis. We'll see you next week. And now it's time for a Neotropolis fact. Did you know that the Akron-Canton Airport provides a $400 million economic impact to the Akron area each year? All right, time now for the answers to that trivia. The average man spends 3,000 hours of his lifetime shaving. And when it comes to that, one in four American men use a very familiar product made right in Ashland, Ohio. Barbasol has been and continues to be a great American company. Featured in recent big hit movies and even endorsed by Babe Ruth, Barbasol has hit it out of the park with the shaving products for over 90 years. Jennifer Bohr has had the chance to visit their new facility and gives us a look at how they do it. The barber pole stripes you see on this can of Barbasol are recognizable around the world, but the product itself has been an icon here in the United States for more than a century. And now it's been just about a year since Barbasol opened this factory here in Ashland, keeping the company local and using Ohio-based products, which is definitely not business as usual. The word barba means barber in Latin, while sol is solution. And in 1919, when Barbasol started producing shaving cream, this barber solution changed the way Americans shaved forever, even according to some of the greats, like Babe Ruth. It's a great brand, great product uh, that's not very expensive. Uh, so we're very, very proud of our name, the Barbasol name. Company headquarters are in Dublin, Ohio, but Barbasol's newest location, an 80,000 square foot manufacturing plant, is in Ashland. We are very, very happy to be here in Ashland. Uh, Ashland is a great community. Uh, we came here because of the people, uh, because of the accessibility to the highways, uh, because of the, uh, but really mainly because of the work ethic uh, of the people. For 2011, our goal is to produce 50% uh, of our production here in, in the Ashland facility. Um, we think we will accomplish that this year. Um, it's, it's important to have more than one location for obvious reasons. God forbid something happens to the building or to the equipment. Uh, 
we have to have a, a, um, another means of producing our product. Uh, so that's the purpose of having two locations. At one point, the company almost ended up in Syracuse, New York, but the owner of parent company Perio Inc. is a Buckeye at heart and decided against it. So we narrowed our search uh, into the Ohio communities in Ohio, and we stumbled up upon Ashland. Uh, and I'll be honest with you, before I stumbled on Ashland, I didn't know that Ashland even existed. But um, I'm very happy I did. Uh, we came here through our um, our builder, Dublin Building System, who built this building. Uh, they wanted to show us another buildings that they have done in the past, and we came through Ashland, and uh, the rest is history. Once we saw Ashland, uh, we fell in love with it, so that's why we're here. One of our principal tasks is to try and position the county for investment just like this, Barbasol. Uh, invest in the community and create jobs. Evan Skurdy, the director of the Ashland Area Council for Economic Development, says the move means a lot to the community. A couple of things. Number one, I think it just restores our confidence as a community that we still are a great location for manufacturing. I think we have the tools, we have a good team in place to work with prospects like this, but it's a, it's a good indication of how things have changed. We're maybe not going to be a community of 10, uh, 500 person, fa uh, 500 employee factories anymore, uh, with offshore competition and global economics to change things. These are the opportunities. More niche businesses. According to Ashland Mayor Glenn Stewart, it comes at a pivotal time when the area, like many others, has lost major manufacturers. Manufacturing has traditionally been extremely important. However, I suspect wherever you go, you will find that a great deal of the manufacturing has been moved to another part of the world in some cases. Uh, we have had some rather large employers leave us over the last five or six years, and it's a, it's a very difficult uh, recovery for those jobs. Uh, they were good jobs. Uh, there were many of them. Uh, I, I don't want to, maybe a thousand total, and they're gone. But the mayor says Ashland has also had some recent successes, like keeping the Archway Cookie Company and, of course, bringing in jobs through Barbasol, which he says made residents very happy. Oh, they were ecstatic, uh, you know. Uh, so there's 25 or 30 jobs, and we lost hundreds, but this is the right step forward. Barbara Lang, the president of the Ashland Area Chamber of Commerce, says the chamber also helped draw Barbasol to its new location. Our mission is to promote and enhance the economic well-being of the Ashland area, so that's pretty all-encompassing, but we do whatever we can to help bring businesses into Ashland and to realize that we are someplace special. When Mr. Halaka first contacted us and said, we're looking, Ashland might be a possibility, it was our job to prepare the data, everything from workforce to available buildings, um, other selling points, uh, access to markets. I think this is a great indication of how we are a good access to consumer markets, a great consumer product locating here like this. But we became even more involved because we're sitting in a city business park. The city owns this land that is sold to companies like Barbasol. And so we help advise and um, coordinate the negotiation process for the land sale. One of the logistical issues in securing Barbasol's move to Ashland involved bringing the railroad yeah. to the facility site. It's a private company called Ashland Railway. Um, they entered into the negotiations and extended the rail spur here. And so it's become a, a critical piece of the puzzle. They wanted rail service. So they had to bring it across Faultless Drive into the interior of the business park. And so now it's here to, to fuel their growth. As a longtime Ashland resident, it's community growth that Barbara is taking to heart. Well, it is so exciting. My background was I was part owner of a manufacturing company. So I'm manufacturing, and that part of the base that is Ashland is so much a part of me. And so it's just a thrill to be able to see businesses come in and thrive and hire our local people and, and do well, do well as Barbasol is doing. It's a move that she thinks will have a widespread impact, encouraging other companies to move into the region, which in turn would bring in more jobs. Employment is just key. It's key to our economy, to the city tax base, to our school system, just to so many things, to the quality of life that is Ashland. Sometimes it brings tears to my eyes uh, because the, the people here uh, in Ashland when we first came, as I said, welcomed us with open arms. And at the time, the economy was not, too doing, was not treating the people here very well. 
And uh, we were just so elated and so happy to provide a small uh, portion of uh, employment that was displaced uh, from Ashland in the last three to five years. One of the promises Barbasol made to the city when they first arrived was that they would hire 25 people at minimum in the first three years. But they're already at about 40 people right now in their first year. And the future is looking even brighter. Our uh, products uh, are doing well, uh, especially the Pure Silk, the, the female uh, uh, shaving cream product uh, is doing very, very well. Uh, we uh, had an increase uh, in demand from our uh, customers this year in 2011. So their goal is to expand the volume of pure silk by doubling or even tripling the product units over the next two to three years. There's quite a few steps in the process to get the cans on the line, get them filled and get them boxed and ready to go out the door. According to Brent Stein, the operations manager, production has quickly evolved at this new facility over the past 11 months. Production starts here in the compounding area where they mix the shaving cream. This is uh, the beginning of the process where we make the batches. Uh -huh. And uh, basically we melt our raw materials into small tanks that are transferred into a larger tank where all the raw material get mixed together. Uh -huh. And that's how we make a batch. Then it heads off to the gravity feed tank. Next, they add the four fillers and finally the bottles get packaged. We normally, when we're running the Barbasol product, we run our equipment at 180 cans a minute and we produce about 130 to 140,000 cans over the course of two shifts. Before working at Barbasol, Brent says he worked in a beverage plant that was relocated and shut down. So I had to let 48 to 60 people go. So it was pretty important for me to see a new plant in the area being built. And also it's very nice to be part of a startup of a company with an owner who believes in building America. It's an all-American brand, from the red, white, and blue on the classic style can to the materials used to make the products. Most even come from within Ohio. A lot of our raw materials come from a company by the name of Ashland Chemicals. Ironically, um, at which they have local representation here. Um, our uh, cans come from uh, Cincinnati, a uh, supplier in Cincinnati. And the caps, the caps for the pure silk product, they come from Ohio as well. The idea is to uh, make an American icon with American components, with American raw materials built by American people. And uh, you can't get any more American than Ashland, Ohio. So. Barbasol is planning to expand and double the size of this facility by late this summer. And over the next few years, they're planning to hire at least 15 to 20 new employees. In Ashland, I'm Jennifer Boris for Western Reserve PBS. Barbasol in your future? Pretty good chance. And with that, it's time now for Into the Future. Into the Future. Hi, my name is Rick Arlo. I'm an EMT, biomedical engineer, MD-PhD student at Case Western, and also the co-founder of a company called LifeServe Innovations. Through the experiences of myself and my colleagues, we've noticed the lack of innovation in the surgical airway field. This is a procedure in which a tube is placed through the front of the neck and into the trachea for oxygenation of the patient. This lack of innovation has resulted in up to a 70% rate of complications, including loss of your voice, as well as death, in uh, U.S. soldiers and civilians every single day. We have developed a patent pending procedure based on a snake's fang and two device embodiments. The first of which will allow pre-hospital paramedics and military medics to save more lives. And the second is the first ever device that will allow non-specialty physicians to perform a superior procedure in both the emergency and non-emergency situation which is currently only being performed by surgical specialties. The increased use of this procedure will result in increased patient outcomes, as well as an estimated $3,000 saved per procedure or $400 million saved in aggregate each year. Our preclinical testing in cadavers have shown that the devices are easier to use, are up to 70% faster, and may offer significant clinical safety 
outcomes. Currently, we are finishing preclinical development and testing of our products with clinical relationships at university hospitals and the Cleveland Clinic. We are raising grant funding through the NIH and the military, as well as seeking private investment. For more information, please visit our website at www.lifeserveinnovations. Thank you. We like to give you an edge on the financial field, and the experts at NCA Financial Planners are here now with the stock rep. This week's local company spotlight is Huntington Bank Shares. Although Huntington Bank Shares is headquartered in Columbus, through its subsidiary Huntington National Bank, this financial holding company has a strong Cleveland presence. Huntington Bank Shares was founded in the Midwest over 140 years ago and maintains its commitment to the region today with over 600 banking offices located in Indiana, Kentucky, Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and West Virginia. Huntington also offers retail and commercial financial services online at Huntington.com, through its 24-hour telephone bank, and through its network of almost 1,400 ATMs. It is the 35th largest bank holding company in the country ranked by assets and 27th ranked by deposits. More than 1.3 million consumers, 130,000 small businesses, and nearly 20,000 corporations bank with Huntington. Huntington Bank Shares recently posted net income of $118.7 million, or $0.14 cents per share, compared with just $10.4 million, or $0.01 cent per share, a year ago. Huntington Bank Shares Incorporated trades on the NASDAQ under the symbol HBAN. The midweek close was $6.77. Year-to-date, the stock is negative 1.46%. Over the last five years, Huntington is down 71.65%. And now back to you, Jim. Well, there is plenty of customer satisfaction when it comes to culture and entertainment in Northeast Ohio. We have the man who spends considerable hours on that, and that, of course, is Cool Cleveland's Thomas Mulready. He joins us now to tell you about some other events that are going on in Neotropolis this weekend. What we're talking about is the business of fun. Hey, it's Thomas Mulready from CoolCleveland.com, and this week we want to talk about audio and audiophile retailers in Northeast Ohio. I'm not talking about computers. I'm not talking about home theater, not 5.1. We're talking about true audiophile. This is two-channel stereo, sort of the old-fashioned kind. It's hard to find these days because everyone's going computer, everyone's going home theater. But there are a couple places we would recommend. For one, Play It Again Sam in Lakewood features a lot of used and vintage equipment. They've been around since 1979, right there in Lakewood. Check out uh, some of their classic used and vintage tube amplifiers like Altec and Crown and Sherwood. They've got speaker systems like uh, B&O and Dahlquist. Uh, they also have turntables and reel-to-reel -reel tape decks, if you're familiar with that. Fabulous cassette decks. Check out Bernie at Play It Again Sam. And also, if you're looking for the higher-end stuff, Don Better Audio in Shaker Heights. You can't get any better than Don Better. Uh, he is doing the really top-end stuff, Shindo Labs, DeVore Fidelity, uh, Auditorium 23, Riga Research, the really high-quality stuff. He's in Shaker Heights. Don's a jazz guitarist. He teaches at the Cleveland Institute of Music and over at Case as well. Uh, also, if you're checking out B&B Appliance in Cleveland, uh, they handle other things like furniture and appliances, but they have their share of the high-end audio equipment. And we can't forget AudioCraft, who's been around for a long time in Cleveland, also in that sort of high-end field. Um, in Youngstown area, the speaker shop, Nick DiRazio, you got to check this guy out. He started out handling a lot of different equipment. He's focused mainly now on speakers, just the higher-end stuff. He's on Market Street, actually, in North Lima in the Youngstown area. Uh, brands like Phase Technology and Klipsch. And he does repairs as well. And if you're looking for repairs, Earcoast Electronic Repair Service in Akron, actually in Barberton, uh, they'll handle your repairs for your stereo, for your speakers, etc. So check out Audiophile in Northeast Ohio. It's not easy to find, but your ears will thank you. This is Thomas Mulready from CoolCleveland.com. Have a great week 
in Neotropolis. As we leave, you remember, there are things that you can do to help the Northeast Ohio economy. One way is to get out to any of the events Thomas told us about and make your investment in fun. You can also position yourself out there and make your brilliant comments about the Northeast Ohio economy to the other three or four men and women around you and tell them to spread the word. In the meantime, log on to our website, neotropolis.org, and tell us what you think. I'm Jim Evans. We'll see you next week on Neotropolis, not business as usual. Funding for Neotropolis has been provided by the Burton D. Morgan Foundation, committed to the free enterprise system. First Place Bank is proud to sponsor Neotropolis. As a community bank, First Place Bank believes we are only as strong as the communities we serve. Locally owned businesses are the cornerstone of our communities. We concentrate on helping local businesses make the most of their resources through a variety of services delivered with a community banking touch. The Dominion Foundation. Jumpstart, working with entrepreneurs to accelerate the growth of their high potential businesses to create a more prosperous economic future for Northeast Ohio. Youngstown Business Incubator and Nortech. Next week on Neotropolis, more buzz, stock wrap, and into the future. Find out who is not doing business as usual. Now stay tuned for Newsnight.